But for many, whatever, it speaks to an existential crisis for the party. So today I am asking, what on earth are Boris Johnson and the Conservatives up to? One of those who is bold and brave enough to put his name to his concerns is Marcus Fish, the chair of the Economic Growth Group of Tory MPs. And he's been crystal clear in his stance that he is against a rise in national insurance or tax to pay for social care. And I quoted him earlier on. I'll repeat it now because it matters. I do not believe it's correct to be taking a socialist approach to care when private insurance and other contribution schemes have not been set out. And there he sits, not rescinding a word of it. Marcus, uh, great to see you this Sunday afternoon. It's the word socialist in that quote that it's explosive. Do you regret it? No, no. Um, what I meant by that was that the normal socialist approach to things is just to throw money at them and to raise ta taxes uh, to attempt to pay for it. But of course, the economy goes down the tubes as a result, which is why socialism is never a good idea. So I just think what, what I was meaning is that the knee-jerk response, I think, I don't know where that's come from, and we will see what the eventual proposals are, but what was trailed in the media is, I think, an unacceptable um, shouldering of the entire burden of um, sorting out our social care system, which we definitely need to do by the working age population in a very uh, blanket way. And, you know, young, younger people, people on um, middle or lower wages are really struggling sometimes to be able to afford a house, for example. They can't even con conceive of that in many um, different places. And that's, that I just think is the wrong way. That's the wrong knee-jerk response to a need for money. And it's not something that I would expect of a conservative government. So I raised it to um, try to hope that they will think again. Um, I think it's think a massively important time, you know, to be setting out conservative solutions to things, creative yeah. solutions. Yeah. What I find significant, Marcus, and, and why I stroke we chose to make this our our top story, not just what happens specifically over the next few days about social care, but what it tells us about what your party stands for. Um, and I find it intriguing that it's not only you, it's Ian Duncan Smith, uh, it's also Steve Baker and other people, making it really quite a profound review of what your party and what you lot are actually about. Do you fear, and I listened very carefully to what you said about not examining alternative, other options as solutions, mm. Do you fear that your leader is drifting into something in a rather classic Boris way, or he's actually thought this through and this is the way he wants to go? Well, I would hope, um, I mean, he's a clever bloke. And um, when he turns his mind to things, I think he's incredibly good at thinking about them. So I just hope that we can sit down and have a chat about different options that are out there. I've actually been proposing different ideas about um, an insurance scheme that can help um, fund the future need uh, for social care by younger generations and ones coming towards retirement. Clearly, there's a, there's a big job to do in terms of thinking about how to fund the uh, current older generation's needs, which is the baby boom generation that is moving through. Um, and I've put forward various solutions. And I think, you know, many very wealthy pensioners would find it slightly strange if they weren't asked to maybe make a bit more of a contribution than they are at the moment. And I don't think that isn't, um, that isn't necessarily applying to people across the board. But, um, you know, there are lots of very wealthy pensioners who I don't think um, would, would mind making a bit more of a contribution to helping the government to kick off such an insurance scheme and make it work properly. I mean, it's interesting, I, I, before you joined me, I was reading out a number of messages that have come in from, from people who were listening to me talking to your, your colleague Deanna Davison earlier on and John Rental um, uh, about the subject as well. A number of folks saying, you know, I worked all my life, paid my national insurance, paid my taxes. Um, it's, it's my turn to have some back now, and therefore it's absolutely right and proper that younger folk... Uh, who are the ones who pay national insurance overwhelmingly as a proportion of their earnings, should chip in and help me. Well, no, there are, I think that they should certainly um, think about making provision for themselves. And that obviously helps um, the older generation in terms of funding the ongoing commitment to the program. So I think I'm not saying that, um, that there shouldn't be any um, 
uh, provision by the younger generations. And actually, the earlier that you start making provision into a pooled insurance scheme or um, some other investment type approach that, that can roll up returns over many years, uh, the more efficient that is in terms of delivering good outcomes. So um, in Australia, for example, for healthcare, and I'm not suggesting that this is what we should do in healthcare here, but as a sort of an idea for how it could be applied in social care, they, if you don't have um, insurance to, to help top up the uh, state provision um, by the time that you're 30, I think it is, then you get an ex- you have to pay an extra point, um, an extra percentage point of income tax on your earnings, which is a way of incentivizing people to sort of make their own decisions and to be self-reliant by seeking out schemes that can help them have choice when it comes to, um, in that case, healthcare. But I'm I'm talking about. Um, Social care in this instance, um, and also I would add to that saving in that way. Yeah, let me butt in. Let me just only because time is slightly against us. But but in an add to that list, not to disagree. I don't disagree with you on that one, but also rather like pensions. There is the state pension. There's a big row about the triple lock and what have you. But now, uh, if you're an employer or an employee, uh, you are supposed to make a contribution to a workplace pension fund. It's kind of nudging people back towards that era of um, personal responsibility. which which Thatcher uh, was really responsible for and taking the Tories out of the lethargy of the Ted Heath days. Uh, Thatcher was there. Cameron had to cut a deal with the Liberal Democrats. That was a different time. And Johnson's Mm. now there in the frame, making his mind up whether he's going to go back to Thatcherism or more like Mm. Cameroonianism. Uh, And the pension Mm. is an open door as much as you quite rightly said, care and even the NHS. Well, I I'd certainly think that there is a danger that as we come out of the pandemic, which has been a really traumatic event for people, clearly there's had to be a collective response. What what we don't want that to sort of slide into is looking at socialist solutions for things. So uh, essentially putting the general taxpayer on the line uh, for unlimited care costs above a certain cap um, would seem to be a sort of uh, pretty identical type solution um, without thinking about whether people have choice and freedom within that um, in the same way as maybe other solutions might. So I just think let's let's try and think creatively about this and think about um, sort of a smart, modern, conservative solution to how to fund what we need to do, which is to improve the quality of social care and people's access to it. Marcus Fish, great to see you. Thank you very much indeed. I hope you enjoy the rest of your uh, afternoon. And Marcus's article is in the Sunday Telegraph. And if you've not read it in full, um, and having listened to what he and I were talking about there, it is worth visiting. I'm not saying agree with it or disagree with it, but but read it, because there are some fairly fundamental uh, suggestions.